So these are the Tin Hi-Fi T5s, which is Tin Hi-Fi's most recent release, which sounds like absolute crack. I, I don't know how they came to this. I don't know how Tin fell down this hole this far with, with an IEM more expensive with presumably more budget, but somehow they managed to make a lot of their products a lot worse the higher the more money you pay them which i'm very sorry to say because the, again th this unit was provided by data from csi zone uh they wanted me to do a review an honest review and which i'm doing right now and it is very sad that um unfortunately they sent me the tin highway t5s because um i did hear a bit of word uh like a couple of words from the internet that the t5s were horrible i wasn't exactly sure how bad they were but people kept saying that don't buy them so when i heard that he was gonna send me the t5s i was like mm, let's just hope it's not that bad and unfortunately it kind of is unless unless you fall into a very specific group of people who might like the presentation of these which is quite unique I must say but it's not my first weapon of choice and if you want to get I mean if you want to just skip this part where I start talking about the build quality and the packaging which is the thing that I assume Tin Hive I probably spend the most money on you can skip a few minutes for, uh, forward and I'll talk about sound later on we'll just go through this radical change in shell design which is Actually, I'm pretty sure this is how the design process went with the Tin Hi-Fi's. Uh, the Tin Audio probably went like, ah, yes, um, mm, we want to get, we want to make more expensive IEM, hundred dollars. Okay, um, what should we do? Improve sound? No, no, no. We've already done that. Uh, you know, uh, give better case. We've also done that. Um, uh, make better shell. We've also done that, but we haven't done it properly last time. So let's just do it again. Then they did, and this is one of the best shells I've seen in a very long time. It's exceptionally beautiful, I would say. It's, it's, it's machined quite beautifully. There's a seam here, which is a bit of a downside, I would say. But um, looking at it at a glance and just touching it, feeling this, the, the, these IEMs, they feel like built like they were worth a lot more than they are. But unfortunately, they don't sound like it. Um, yeah, and the cable here is also pretty nice. It's very supple. Unfortunately, it's a straight jack. I don't know why they give us a straight jack. It's an IEM. Please give me angle jacks. They're supposed to be a mobile item, and they can be driven from a mobile phone. They don't need an amp. Uh, the cable itself is pretty nice. Otherwise, it's very there's very little microphonics in it. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with the cable. Actually, uh, it's probably the thing I like the most about the IEMs aside from the shell itself. Now. Uh, the packaging itself will, would contain um, some warranty card, which I cannot show you. Uh, you'll get a few pairs of ear tips, six ear, pairs of ear tips. Seems to be th th there was one missing in the packaging when I got it. I don't know why. Um, it might have been, it might have fallen out when Brian was reviewing it, or it might have just not been there since the beginning. I don't know about that. So yeah, uh, you get this case which is made out of uh, fake leather. Oh yeah, you also get a pair of four mirror tips. I forgot about that completely, uh, and a few pairs of filters. So these are six uh, six filters, three pairs, and you get a, like a tweezer to change them. I assume this is probably because they use a very fine metal filter. It might get clogged up with your all your uh, dirt, uh, ear mucus. And it just gets disgusting over time and the sound will be even worse than it already is. And you have to replace them after some time. So yeah. Um, the, the the tweezers are sort of like, they feel like they're 3D printed. Which is funny, but I mean if they do the job, then that's well. I haven't tried it because I don't want to pry this IEM open because I've got to return them. So, sorry about that. Ah, cry. I just threw a pair of ear tips. Right, so now let's get talking into, like, about the sound, which, again, it's pretty disappointing, but it has its own, uh, so I, I don't want to say the strong points, I would say it's, it's, it's just a very different presentation, right? So we'll start off normally like we do, well, I'll just start talking about the bass. We'll just get the, all the, all the, all the shoddy parts away first, which is, right, so... 
the base of these they're not really well controlled there's a uh, there's quite a bit of sub base but there's more mid base a uh, mid base kind of kicks it's kind of mushy um, sub base also somewhat rumbles a little bit not a lot uh, if you like to listen to a lot of EDM that has a very uh, very low notes, these will not be able to represent them in a manner that might be satisfying. So if your bass hat, I think you would want to look elsewhere, uh, unless you just like a small emphasis in the mid bass uh, and don't mind the lack of sub bass, then maybe it's good for you. But the overall speed of the bass, I feel, is quite slow, uh, especially compared to the rest of the Tin Hi-Fi line. And the T5s are actually quite slow. Uh, they're not well controlled either. They kind of get mushy after songs that are like even remotely quick. So some EDM songs, even the T5s are unable to handle properly. Uh, aside from that, there's also quite a bit of bleed into the mid-range, which is what we're going to be talking about next. The mid-range of the T5s. Um, this is also what makes them unique, but also what where, where, where they kind of fall apart as well. The mid-range is not well defined. There's, there's not a lot of details in the mid-range, which is kind of a following trend considering that the bass was kind of less controlled and it just had no texture, basically. Uh, the mid-range is not well separated. It, it does not have a lot of detail. It's also very far back. It's it's very recessed for some reason, but there's this sort of like just this a little bit of emphasis in the upper mid. So for some violins, etc., you'll still feel that it's kind of it's not that for the back compared to the rest of the mid range, but to me overall the mid range sounds kind of hollow and far away, kind of odd to be honest. But last night I stayed up until like 5 a.m. I was listening to these and I played my rock playlist, uh, which was terribly mastered all that good stuff but it actually sounded pretty decent i kind of like the presentation of the mid-range uh, with rock i changed it up to edm and stuff and it just didn't work well for me this well, while i was listening to rock they presented the sound as if i were in sort of like a, a very horribly treated hall it's kind of like those uh what's it called uh school halls that you have where you have these like uh or, or, or like a sports gym where you usually have your like choir team and all those guys singing this is kind of what it reminds me of it's probably the easiest presentation i can think of right now um it it makes sound present uh, it presents itself like it's being played in a very big room or hall it's very far away or overall mid-range sounds like this you might like this if you listen to these with for I mean, for rock, um, but that kind of falls from person to person. And even uh, then again, I was like awake at like 5 a.m. last night, and I and but listening to them again this morning, I I still thought the same thing. Like this is acceptable. Like I can I can like this. Do I like this? Not not really. But if you're a person who likes this sort of presentation, you you might do it. It's I, I feel like this this is this is for a very specific group of people that might like this presentation, right? And again, uh, another part of the T5s, which is the treble, which is also not, not that great. <laughs> There's not a lot of detail or separation in the treble as well. But the treble of the T5s, this somewhat reminds me of Grados for some reason. They, they reminded me of my pair of SR80s that I had a while back. And the treble presentation kind of reminded me of that. There was not a lot of detail. It wasn't really well controlled. It was kind of splashy, uh, somewhat, uh, somewhat peaky as well, and a bit sharp. But for rock, it actually, it wasn't bad. It, 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 it was okay. This this kind of reminded me of the Grado treble of the SR80s, the SR80Es, I believe I had. Um, it's not. I don't think it's exactly the same. I don't. I don't have the. Uh, SR80s with me anymore, but this, this is so. This is mostly just based off of com uh, based off of memory that I uh, am giving this comparison. But this is what the first thing I uh, remembered when I was listening to the trouble section of the Tin Five uh, T5s here, right? Now, um, now that we've got like most of the frequency range covered, right? Uh, oh yeah, I forgot the treble extension on these. Not that great as well. They're just okay-ish. Um, yeah, let's just 
go and, and talk about the sound stage of these. So the sound stage of the T5s are they're quite wide, like I said earlier when I was talking about the mid-range. They present them, the, the sound is presented kind of like uh, it's a bit further away than the rest of the music, right? So the sound stage, uh, depending on which section, part of the song that you're listening to, might sound wider than uh, not, okay? With these mid-range, usually sounds like it's for the back. So sound stage perception, uh, when you're listening to the mid-range of your music, might sound further away than it's supposed to be. The general sound stage of these for the bass and the treble region isn't that wide. If this were my head, they go in quite a bit, right? So they're not that far away. Uh, they're, not that, no, they're not that big in terms of its presentation. With uh, with the mid range itself, uh, the mid range sounds nearly as wide as my head. So that's something interesting, I would say. Um, yeah, that that's what kind of gives that sort of like hall-ish sound, I believe. Yeah, imaging-wise, not that great. Um, I was able to perceive an accuracy of like, like sixty-ish degrees, which is not the worst, but also not the best. Um, at least you still I'm still able to distinguish the direction of sounds coming in, but then again, because of that odd presentation, I suppose that kind of contributed to how odd the imaging was on T5s as well, right? So, yeah. So, overall conclusion, couple of comparisons. The T5s, you definitely need to listen to these uh, if you want to buy them, if you're thinking of buying them, unless you just want these because they look beautiful, or if you want a cable for these, which by the way, uh, I think they have changed to using two pin cables instead of the usual thin hi-fi MMCX. I don't know why they decided to do that, it's, it's like, it's kind of like just changing up how you usually dress, right? So it's like, normally they do with MMCX connectors, but now they decided to do two pin. Okay, I guess. Um, you definitely need to listen to these. Uh, they present sound in a very different manner. If you fall into that specific group that likes this kind of presentation, then good for you. But a uh, general consensus, I would say you probably don't like these. For this kind of price range, I would probably, uh, I would have an easier time just recommending you something like the Moondrop Arias or the Starfields. Or hell, you can even get the lower end uh, thin variants. I would say even the T2s and the T2 Pluses sound better than the um, T5s. And both the T2s and the uh, T2 Pluses overall sound a lot less hollow and they're, I think they're overall better controlled across the whole frequency range as well. Uh, the T4s are also a decent option, but I would say that this is probably, if I wanted to rank in terms of like how good they are, uh, they're mostly in the budget range of like the T2 and the T2 pluses uh, in terms of like what I can tolerate these to be priced at. I wouldn't be able to tell myself that these were the uh what almost a hundred bucks that these cost uh, i wouldn't be able to sleep at night thinking that it was a good purchase because it, it's 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 not simply not for me All right so yeah so that's it for this review uh again i'm very sorry that uh, you should have sent me those sundaras instead of these man because these are just for a very specific group of people All right so yeah uh, thank you guys for watching, uh, subscribe if you want more content like this, comment what you think, and...